Today, we are gonna be doing some pond hopping with the brand new Berkeley Nessie. Oh my goodness. That is a giant voice. Now, if you guys are like me, I'm an avid pond hopper, and uh, that's probably why you guys follow my channel. So today, I figured it'd be a great idea to get out here to some of these beautiful local ponds in Texas and really test out this awesome new soft plastic swim bait by Berkeley. So without further ado, guys, let's go ahead and take a closer look at this brand new bait that I actually picked up at Discount Tackle. Then we'll get out there on the water and start fishing it. The Berkeley Nessie is a soft plastic glide bait available in 10 vibrant colors and three sizes. The five inch, two fifths ounce, the seven inch, one ounce, and the nine inch, two ounce. Featuring a reinforced glide bait joint combined with stabilizing fins and an extra fluid tail movement, this bait has some irresistible action that can be fished in multiple ways, like slow rolling, twitching, or a gliding motion. Either way, it creates some lifelike action. And once again, if you're looking to grab some yourself, I'll make sure to leave a link below in my description. All right, guys, so now that we got a good idea of how this bait looks in the water and just a little bit more about the functionalities of this bait, let's go ahead and start fishing it. Now that that sun's coming up, hitting the water, it's really time to start cranking them and see if we can find our first fish on this brand new Berkeley Nessie. Starting to walk this bank. Look at this place, man. This is a beautiful location. You got the beautiful wall right here behind us, but I mean, mansions all around us at this beautiful reservoir. And uh, it almost looks like a Mexican castle uh, over here, a little mission. So pretty sweet, pretty awesome location. Very, very shallow, very, very pressured spot. Um, but at the same time, it can produce. And I figured, you know, go to spots that are semi-pressured, pretty pressured, and try to show you guys what this bait can really do. Because if we get skunked today, I mean, we get skunked. And that's the realistic, uh, the realism of using a swim, swim bait at ponds. You know, you can get skunked, and you can also really get the fish to bite. I mean, we'll fish these little areas too. You can't be afraid to throw swim baits in small spots, shallow spots, because sometimes the fish just that's what they'll go after there. It doesn't matter what's the depth of the water. It's about the bait that is in front of them, the presentation. To be honest, I'm not gonna lie, and like no knock on Berkeley. This reminds me really of like a, like someone who just designed a bait for the first time. Reminds me of like those hard swim baits that are not the prettiest, but they're functional. That's what I'm trying to say by it. It's not the prettiest look, not the best swim out there, but it's definitely a good swim and it's definitely functional. It creates the movement you want. It's, it does what you want. Um, but when you stare at the bait, it's not the prettiest. <laughs> That's for sure. And it, and it has like a net joining system um, that reminds me very much of the Jackal uh, jointed bait that they have. Let's keep moving. Let's keep moving. Let's keep swimming. A little bit deeper looking pockets over here we got the canals that roll in we got all the good stuff over here so maybe we'll find something all right let's put on the uh, five inch bait and see if we can get anything going on that thing i will say this is a good looking little bait man see how far oh man we can still buck this thing out there pretty good might have to put a weight in it uh, like a nail weight to help pull it down a little bit more so right now it's on the surface of the water, which is not a bad thing. Oh my gush. Oh my gush. <laughs> Couldn't even say goodness. This looks even better than the uh, the seven inch. This is like perfect for this pond. Literally perfect. It looks almost like a, like a little bluegill. Oh, I have to have my rod tip real far down for this thing. It almost looks like a little bluegill. Or like a little like baby bass starting. Look at it. it, looks like a little baby bass. Just like, where's my mommy? that's gonna get munched by a big bass all right guys so we just got out here to our next spot test out this uh berkeley nessie we got the little five inch on there i just noticed pull up to this spot we're actually missing an eye on this thing i don't know how that happened or when that happened but uh yeah that's kind of sad it might be because i shoved this uh weight in here it might have pushed things a little wacky but um yeah i just wanted to go ahead and mention that real quick so that's a little upsetting but at the same time 
it is what it is soft plastics they're gonna you know wear down and have some issues we're just gonna go ahead and slow roll this thing in around this area and uh, see if we can find ourselves our first fish pond hopping with the nessies give a little cranks and pauses and see if that maybe gets our first bite on this thing fish should be moving up soon should be feeding up soon too but oh my goodness that was sick oh my goodness let's try to land this guy come on oh, oh. I was just talking about how they should be starting to feed up, move up. Look at that thing engulfed it, dude. I'm gonna try to be real careful. It looks like we got him on the gill plate. All right, guys. Well, our first fish on the Nessie. Hopefully you can hear me. The wind's picking up like crazy right now. But I'll have to say that is a solid pond fish to get on the, uh, the Nessie. And look at that thing completely engulfed by this fish. He was bleeding a little bit when we got him in. Uh, but he's definitely clogged up now definitely stopped bleeding which is what we wanted um, you know put him back in the water kind of help him revive and now we're getting to show you guys this absolute beautiful pond fish i mean look at the girth on this fish let me let some line out so you can see this a little bit easier i mean oh he's bleeding a little bit more okay we got to get some uh some quick action going real quick All right, let her burp, let her burp. I wanna to watch to see if she comes back up or anything. She had a lot of blood come back up, but I think it was just once we got that hook out, um, she was finally able to burp and get that stuff actually coagulated. All right, guys, absolute solid first fish um, on this Nessie. I will say that is one of my, my feared things about fishing with uh, smaller swim baits, especially ones with treble hooks, is the, the tendency for bigger fish to swallow. Um, and you know you can have that that bleeding and you can honestly really hurt some fish But you know we did our best to get it back in the water as quickly as possible Try to stop that bleeding get the hook out as easy as possible as fast as possible And uh, you know we we're still able to show you guys a little bit and as you see um, Within the maybe minute and a half we had her out of the water. She was ready to go again We're gonna give it a try real quick and see if maybe we can find something on these tree lines or Who knows? I mean, I don't have a high um you know expectation but you don't know if you don't try oh my that was a deep hole um it's not gonna be easy to cast through these areas either but we'll try it out landed right on top of that turtle solid i think the spot right behind me is going to be the best one for oh i just said that and look what happened i just said that and look what happened oh my goodness Look at this. This fish spit out my lure and it went around a tree. Oh. That is a giant voice. <laughs> all right guys there we go get a look at that fish absolute unit right here this thing's got to be three pushing on four and uh yeah that five inch bait is clearly getting those pond fish in that thing was about as shallow as these fish get and we were lucky because this hook actually detaches from the bait as you can see right here um, so your tension is on the the hook basically the whole time and not the bait itself um, so that makes it real easy to secure fish when you do hook onto them and you kind of have to battle them a little bit harder like we did because we're in, be in between those trees right there but yeah as you guys can see this thing is definitely producing the uh, five inch nessie is uh, getting those pond fish very active very thick tail on this fish they're not in spawn season yet i can tell because he doesn't have a red belly but you can see the uh the anal is uh very very uh, red on this fish which lets me know he's eating a lot eating heavily and um, they're starting to get towards that that spawn kind of uh environment and as you see this tail is actually looks like he was rubbing on a log um, so maybe this is like the first day they're moving up into beds and we are just getting lucky enough to find them in the shallow so that'll that might let us know that we need to fish just the edges real easy real slow and uh, hopefully we can secure ourselves another solid fish like this Swimming a little weird. Pulling 
on, buddy. Ah, oh, your hook's out. So I will say, after two fish, this thing's not really holding the hook very well anymore, but I mean, that happens. The good thing about it is, if I can find my handy dandy pliers, it's wire. So you can just come over here, pinch it again, kind of put some good pressure on that thing. And uh, now it's, I mean, I can barely get that in there. That's all I want, you know, I want it to be not so easy, not so hard. Oh, there's a certain way that the thing goes in. Oh, didn't know that. So one of the hooks or the barbs has like a, like a triangle. It's kind of triangle shaped. So that point goes in a little bit easier than the other two. So this should have some nice, good angles for us. Get under this tree. But also this, this wall or this ledge that we're on right here is very rocky. Good potential for fish to just be hanging out. Oh, we got nailed and there he goes. Dude, this thing is destroying the fish. I mean, making it easy. There we go, guys. Another one, not the biggest one of the day, but look at these. Every single fish, nice belly, huge tail, beautiful strain of fish in general, and every single one of them is trying to absolutely engulf that thing. I gave it a second to let him actually eat this bait because I felt him hit it. I'm like, no, nah, I'm not gonna rip it out of his mouth right away. And uh, it actually worked out pretty well because just got the roof of his mouth, did not get the uh, gill plates. And as you see, we got him pinned and on the deck, dude. This is, ow, this is a solid, solid lure. I think that is our third fish of the day and uh, we've had a, a few swipes at it or one swipe at it that was a miss so all together this thing is producing really really well there we go all right guys back in the water he goes try out this little cove a little bit Look how low this pond is. Wow, this is really low. Standing normally where the water is. It's still like a foot and a half deep though. Oh, nailed it right there at the end. Oh yeah, little guy, little guys. Little guys love it too. Look at that guys. Woo trying to grab them little guys love it too i'll take that dude that is like fish number four or five today just first cast out here in this spot never really catch fish in this pond but today we do dude when they're hitting this thing they're just trying to eat it whole and the hooks on this thing are insanely sharp like i i have so much trouble getting them out there we go another one. Oh, he was not happy I wouldn't be either though if I had a hook in my mouth. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I think that's a fish you're gonna do for today. As you can see, the sun is disappearing below those tree lines. Um, and you know, we had a lot of fun out here. This Nessie swim bait, the five inch one, definitely produces here at these smaller ponds. I was talking about, you know, matching the hatch and having a bait that kind of, uh, you know, is what the pond would have here, you know, the bluegill, the smaller shad, maybe some minnow, stuff like that. When you're getting towards those, the threadfin shad, the seven inch baits, they're not gonna really work at spots like this. They can, don't get me wrong. It has to do with a lot with the seasonal transition right now. We're in that spawn. So the fish are feeding up for that spawn. They want baits that are easy to eat, that are gonna fill them up, that are gonna be abundant for the, uh, the nutritional value because they're about to sit on beds for at least like three months right now. So sometimes eating those big baits that they're gonna have to fight with, they could possibly lose. Um, you know, they're not really looking into something like that so um, but yeah the, the five inch bait as y'all saw amazing bait out here green pumpkin colors what I was throwing today they have shads they have bluegills they have a bunch of awesome patterns I highly recommend you pick up some of these things at discount tackle if you have not already um, the seven inch bait we were throwing it in the trout pattern I also have that shad pattern in the nine inch bait I don't know when I'm gonna throw it but I promise you guys we will get out and do a whole video just on those bigger baits as well maybe we'll have to get out to a lake like possum kingdom or something like that um, but yeah let me know in the comments below what you guys think if you enjoyed these baits hopefully this gave you a little bit more idea of what they can do for you and maybe using that five inch bait will help you get confidence with swim baits um, so that way you might be able to up your game you know when the time comes but that's gonna be it for today guys if you did enjoy the video please hit that thumbs up maybe that subscribe button and we'll catch you all in the next one thanks for watching y'all peace